Today, on World Fish Migration Day, May 21st, 2022, the alewives are running in the Penobscot River. This is the Penobscot River Rebound. Penobscot River has been the home of the Penobscot Indian Nation since time immemorial. Although numerous dams still dominate the river, fragmenting habitat and preventing the restoration of many indigenous species, the Penobscot River is starting to heal. Jason Mitchell, I work for Penobscot Nation, Department of Natural Resources. I am the tribe's water resources field slash non-point source coordinator. I've been working with the tribe for 28 years now. For us, the Penobscot River is actually a citizen of the nation. You know, we are connected to the land, the water, and everything that's in it and on it. So they're all our relatives. And our goal is to make sure everything is as healthy as it can be for them, for all future generations to come. This uh, river has been here for thousands of years, and so have my people. I'm always, uh, always around it. I've always been around it. Just, that's what it is. The Penobscot Indian Nation and its restoration partners have built upon this success by completing over 20 aquatic connectivity projects on tribal trust lands within the watershed. These projects have reconnected nearly 100% of the Matamascontis stream drainage, a tributary of the Penobscot River. So my name is John Neptune. I'm from the Eel Clan and I'm from the Penobscot Nation. And I work with the youth. I'm the recreation coordinator for the youth program. Been doing that for 27, 28 years. I also work with the waste program, Wabanaki Youth and Science. The Penobscot Nation and, and the river have been, they've been connected for thousands and thousands of years. The restoration process uh, brings that relationship kind of back in balance. It's my responsibility to pass on what I learned. Just recently, we've started going out live fishing again. It makes me feel more connected to the river and to the land because we go out live fishing and we'll get the fish. We just get like usually two buckets or something like that. Um, and we'll take it and we'll actually put them in the garden. So it kind of makes me feel like connected because, you know, that's what our ancestors used to do take the fish and use them as fertilizer. So I just, I feel like it, it's kind of starting to come full circle again. Hopefully in the near future, uh, a tribal harvest, a celebration on our lands uh, when the outwives are running. And also my favorite fish is the Atlantic salmon. So I'd love someday to be able to see the salmon population come back so that future generations can enjoy that fish as our ancestors did forever. Well, for me, when I think of the future, um, of course I think of my children and my family, but you know, we're 100% dependent on the earth. I think we lose focus of that. So my hope of the future is for uh, Mother Earth and for the earth uh, to be healthier. So if that means I gotta make sacrifices to make that happen, then that's what I do. My hope is that it continues to improve. We keep seeing the restoration efforts and more dam removals and then in turn more species coming up farther where they used to go. Um, and then also making sure that we're educating our youth on the importance of that so that they in turn will continue to advocate for the river. The reconnected habitat allows the natural rhythms and cycles of life to be restored and aquatic species are now able to complete their life cycles by utilizing and accessing different habitats as needed without barriers. Water, sediment, nutrients, and sea-run herring are now free to move through the system as they did for millennia.